Hi everyone, Mehmed is here. Today I will show you really important pro tips about Desmos art. Remember the Pikachu graph we created together in video 3. Today we will graph it again and color it. And we will do it professionally. Let's get started. This is the fifth video of Desmos art video series. In the first four videos I talked about basics. And now let's make things a little bit more professional and let's start working. Here is the Pikachu graph. If we color it by using the techniques I showed you in video 3, um, this happens. Colors overlapping, there are parts that look like uncolored even though we colored them. So the methods in video 3 works great between the lines and in circles, but not in curves. So we need to do a more professional way of coloring. Actually, we need to graph it again and I will show you how you can combine several functions. First of all, if x values or y values are not overlapping, use piecewise functions to combine things. Um, for example, the right side of Pikachu, you see, y values are not overlapping, right? All three parts have different y values, so we can combine them by using piecewise functions, by creating y intervals. Let's name the piecewise function. Um, if you want to give a letter name, only a letter name, like A, just type and put equal sign. But if you want to name it as a word, let's say side, um, write the first letter, then other letters need to be written as subscripts. So press shift and dash, it goes to underscore and uh, you continue writing other letters. After that, go one unit right and put equal sign, open the curly brackets and write the functions. I will start with the first one. Remember, we write the interval first, put colon and write the function. We created all these functions in video 2, so I am using the same. Now put comma, write the second interval, colon, and the function. Great. Okay, when we check the third function, we realize that it is written differently, because the interval is um, for variable x, not for y. We cannot directly include it in this piecewise function, because the variables are different, right? But we can use the inverse function. So I will go to symbolapp.com, a super useful website, and find the inverse of this. Because it's a square root function, it's going to give me two answers, and one of them will work. Let's try this one. And of course, we need to swap x and y values. And yes, it is the correct one. Great. We also need to write the interval with y values. And let's include this one to piecewise function. Great. Now you see guys, I used a piecewise function to combine three functions. I will do the same for other parts. Let's continue to do it for the top. Um, three functions here. All of them has x intervals, so no problems. Let's combine them. Done. By the way, I know we can use absolute value for the top, but I will talk about that in a few minutes. For the bottom, no need to combine anything because it is just one function. Let's name it. Okay. And the left side. We don't actually need to graph this um, because absolute value of x on the right side will give us the left side. But if you want to graph it, use the same methods we use um, for the right side. I am graphing it right now, but I will erase it and use the absolute value. Now we got the head by only using four functions. I will change the inequalities uh, because it will be important to understand the next part. Um, okay, here are my functions and now I will combine these four in only and only one expression. Since the values are overlapping, we cannot use a piecewise function anymore. Um, there's another way using maximum and minimum. We use maximum and minimum in three different ways. First, to combine functions. Second, to color them. And third, to choose specific part of the graph. I will show you all three. And I will start with the first one. Let's start with combining these four functions. To do that, type zero, an equal sign, and then type maximum. Max. Just max. Um, open the brackets. Now we need to decide what functions to choose. Because I will use the same expression, to graph as well, I will choose the top part like y minus top. So it will choose the top curve and when we graph it, it will choose below the top part. Let's continue, put comma, then write the next part. For the bottom, same logic, but we go with bottom minus y. Let's see what happens. Yep, you see guys, it combined the intersection of these two functions. Maximum chooses the intersection and minimum chooses the union. That's why I am using maximum here. Let's add the sides. I will add the right side first, so the left part will be x minus right side. And I told you right, we don't need to graph the left side because 
it is symmetric so I can just use the absolute value sign here and boom it chooses both of the sides let's hide all these functions wonderful now I combine everything let's make it black great now it's time to talk about coloring so when I change the equal sign with an inequality it starts coloring for example smaller than colors outside and bigger than colors inside again maximum basically graphs the intersection and minimum graphs the union okay I will also combine other functions let's combine both pupils I will just choose one of them move everything on one side um, the left side will be zero and because it is symmetric I will use the absolute value of x and boom let's name it pupils and uh, when you do that the circles disappear but don't worry we can use it and we have circles for the eyes and the blushes we're gonna use the same method this is how we use absolute value now let's color the face I will copy and paste this one first I will change the equal sign and write an inequality here and now we are going to exclude eyes and blushes um, from this area to do that just add the function like that minus eyes comma minus blush and that's it to avoid uh, those dashed lines uh, go to settings and disable lines okay let's talk about the nose and the mouth these are the equations we used for the nose since both x and y values are overlapping um, I cannot use a piecewise function let's say I have these two equations write the first equation like that 0 equals y minus 2 then subtract the second one I am using it like that because I will use this part divide this part by 2 write all in absolute value write x in absolute value as well I will put another brackets for you to see things clearly then choose all this part without y paste outside the absolute value and only and only change the sign boom it gives you a triangle um, here how we combine two equations to get a symmetric shape not just a triangle we can get different shapes now I will use the numbers in the original function and yes we get the nose um, let me paste it here and name it I will also exclude this area here from the face great and we will use the same method for the mouth let's take the functions it's symmetric so um, these two enough move everything on one side left side is zero add the other function divide this part by two make x an absolute value and add absolute value for all the part copy and paste this part outside change the sign boom great let's paste it here and name it as a mouth subtract the area wonderful let's color it um, the original yellow the Pikachu yellow by the way to add the original color guys I used the method I showed you in video 3 and finally I will fix the ears um, to do that we will use the maximum and minimum again let me show you how it works let's say here's the function if you choose the minimum until 2 it graphs it like that um, you see y is less than 2 and 2 if you choose the maximum it does the opposite let's have a parabola and yes it works the same and here's our function I will remove the interval and get the maximum let's say 2 um, yeah I will name it as ear so look at this changing the constant value here changes the graph like that great let's copy and paste it to Pikachu graph okay I need to change the constant value and I think 2.9 is good so it doesn't cross the graph it's not really disturbing it is a straight line um, and curvy on the ear only this is the last way of using maximum and minimum now I will also exclude the ear parts from the yellow area we're gonna add x minus ear here and when we write x in absolute value you can clearly see that both sides are excluded from the yellow area um, this is great okay we are done with the yellow part it is time to color other parts let's start with the ears um, these parts will be black I will use maximum again to color and the area I want to color is between the ear right side and the top function so I will go with 0 is bigger than maximum x minus right side x in absolute value because we also have the left side symmetric right and y minus top and ear minus x and x in absolute value again great I'll make it bigger than or equal to uh, to color the curve between the areas the area between the eyes and the pupils um, will be black so two functions I add another maximum here eyes comma minus pupils 
for nodes, the same idea, but it's just one function actually, you don't need to use the maximum here. It is the same for blush as well. Um, you don't need maximum, it's a standard coloring because we only have one function. Um, for the mouth, we need another curve because if you graph it, it will look like that. So it's not how Pikachu looks like, right? Um, let's go back to the original function and copy and paste the curve we have. Here it is. Let's name it as a tongue. We don't need the domain, by the way. Um, let's change the area and add Y minus tongue here. Great. And uh, for the remaining part, we can add a black area. The same idea. Finally, I will copy and paste this curve to complete my graph. Done. I think we did a great job. You see the difference between both graphing methods. On the left, I use inequalities like in video 3. On the right, I used maximum. Um, you see, the graph on the right looks much, much better. And also on the left, we have 60 entries, but on the right, it's only 20. By the way, the links for the original Pikachu and the colorful one, both in the description below. Okay, I hope you liked the video. And if you want to help me create more videos like this one, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon. We are very close to hit 10k subscribers on YouTube and we can do it together. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and let me know. I will answer your questions as early as possible. See you next time. Keep watching Mathematics. Goodbye.